All right, we are recording. Yay. 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 Only 11 minutes later. All right. So, again, welcome. So, first, I have a couple announcements. Uh, next week, we will be doing a workshop here in this building, in this room. We will be doing uh, UI and Unity. So, just generally, how do I, how do you create things in with uh, Unity's UI system? Um, We'll just be going over some basic stuff, like how to make a volume slider. That one's a little complicated, actually, just because it's like wonky. I'll explain it next week. Um, but then we'll also do some other stuff, how to do a button click and stuff. So if it's something you're interested in, it's very useful. If you haven't done it before, that's what we'll be doing next week. Uh, also, if you didn't see the email slash announcement, we are doing a poll on when should we do the game jam this semester. Uh, so I think I listed like five weekends that you can pick from uh, and you can just select the ones that are available for you. So you can select all of them or none of them. Uh, I will ultimately end up going with the one that has the most selected and if there's like a tie, I'll just pick one of them. Um, so just a heads up on that. Does anybody need the QR code or? Okay. Uh, this is also in Discord if you need it or in the email. Uh, also, Last call for merch, so uh, we had the t-shirt design that got voted. I'm gonna close that at the end of this meeting. So if you haven't voted for the t-shirt yet, please go fo vote for that during the meeting. Just some random guy, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a stock, it's a stock. Of, I should have put like Hayden up there. That is from last year. So um, I will announce the winning t-shirt design sometime in the next week. Uh, that is the shirt from last year. Another thing that I want to do this year is do hats. So we're going to charge, these are extra, um, and I'm also announcing them kind of last minute. So I'll give everyone like a week or so to get in the order for a hat if you want one. But our plan is to do a black hat with our club logo embroidered on the front center. Um, kind of like that. Wait. Kind of, it would look more like this. So we're going to have like a white border with the controller in the middle and like the red background, uh, except for it's gonna be a black hat instead of gray. I didn't care enough to update the picture to make it black, but <laughs> it's supposed to be black. Um, but if, yeah, if that's something that you wanna do, uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, and we will order those with the t-shirts, so we'll get them all at once. Um, if you want a hat, please talk to me or Jimmy after the meeting. So, fun part today. World building. Ooh. Okay, so uh, all the items and stuff that we have in the front were graciously donated to me. Oh, <laughs> um, so that? we will be we will be using those as props today uh, for an activity we're going to do later in relation to world building. Uh, but to start off, we have one question: What is world building? Yes. World building is kind of like you know, giving sort of a, um, okay, uh, world building is like setting up the history and like, you know, general cultures of your world in the game or in any kind of story. Uh, good answer, yes. <laughs> Everyone give this man a hand, a round of applause, amazing. Anybody else got anything to add? Yes. Story, yep. Do you have a, one as well? I mean, I was just going to say filling out your setting. Yeah. Yeah, basically everything people said falls under world building. I, got, I did the survey. Nice. Good job. Thank you. All right. So then the next thing is, like, what, is, what are some people's favorite games that they played uh, with, like, worlds that come to mind? When, it, when you think of world building, what's the first game that comes to mind? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, Super Paper Mario. That's a good one. Yeah. Elden Ring. Yes, Elden Ring. Uh, Terraria. Kind of. That's a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can argue it, yeah. Greg. Which one? Oh, three houses. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll say Fallout. Yeah. 
No, but that's a good one too. Yeah. Yeah. All there's a lot of games that have some really good world building in them. You guys should have helped me make the presentation because that's a lot of good ones. So uh, what are some elements of world building? We had, uh, well, I'm going to go over them. But you, you did list a lot of them, Gary. So um, yeah, world building can be split into a bunch of different categories. And I'm going to go more into depth into all of these. But here's just a general list of them. Um, the most obvious one is land, like how, you know, uh, followed by that, there's also like history and, and lore that kind of goes into that. Uh, how people talk in the world, different nations that exist within the world, um, the types of people and what the people do in the world, uh, as well as their culture, uh, followed by some, maybe some legends that are in the world, some things that you hear about but you like aren't represented in the game, uh, and then some just strange things in the world. So. I will talk about all of these. Now, like I said, most obvious one is land. Um, and this is any like physical thing for the most part. Uh, so this can be most importantly like the geography, you know, the mountains and the rivers, uh, the fun things that are uh, fun to work on when it comes to world building. Um, but also it has some other things. If you have any sort of resource gathering, you want to think about like where the resources are placed, how does it make sense geograph or, uh, geographically as well as um, any, like within the story in your game. Um, flora, so like plants, wildlife, uh, as well as weather, that is also falls under land. Um, some games don't have weather, but if you do have weather, how is that going to affect the environment? How does it affect the player? Uh, as well as man-made structures. So if you have a city, uh, an outpost of some sort, a road, um, these are all different things that, that can exist physically within the world on land. Okay. Oh my god. So uh, history and also lore is a really good thing as well. Lore. <laughs> yeah. The lore. That's what I that's literally the whole reason why I put that on there. <laughs> the um lore. but there's different things that you want to think about when it comes to this. Um some games like I put Five Nights at Freddy's on there kind of ironically but also unironically. Um, because it has a lot of lore built into the into each game, um, but there's different things within the world that can hint to the lore. Um, for example, I put the Minecraft like bone structure here. Uh, it's very rare, and it like it doesn't really provide any benefit to the player, but it does imply something about the world uh, that was in the history of the world. But you don't know what exactly what it is. So it kind of like when it comes to lore, people do look at that structure and wonder why is it here. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, this can be anything from, yeah, history can be anything from like this happened right before the player started playing or uh, like millions of years ago, there's something that's left behind from some thing in the world. Uh, and this can really take people away. So, something to think about when you're creating a world. You also want to talk, think about how do people talk uh, Slang is kind of like the most obvious thing, but it can go a little different ways. Uh, having different languages is one thing. Not every game speaks in English or whatever your native tongue is. Um, there are some games that speak in gibberish, uh, like Hollow Knight, and there's also other games that speak in uh, made up languages. Uh, like, has anybody heard of Tokopina before? I think that's the name of it. Yeah. Yeah. It is a completely made up language that I think somebody made for a game, maybe. Oh, was it for a game? I know it's a con. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I think, but somebody just made up an entire language and then people use it in games all the time. Um, it sounds really cool. Uh, and it's also very simple. But um, there's stuff like that too. Uh, and this all just plays into the game. And there's also other things like in Cyberpunk. This totally looks like, <laughs> I love the poster design. Um, but there's slang too that the players can have, characters can have, all this different stuff. So. Things to think about that kind of influence the culture, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, so another thing to think about with world building is nations. So uh, how like different governments that have basically come to be within the world. Um, you know, sometimes if this is a little outside of your scope of your game, you don't necessarily need this. But if you have a large world, this sometimes comes into play. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, you want to also consider um, you want to consider history when it comes to this as well. Uh, when you're creating those nations, you can also look at real life history to see kind of how generally how some nations have developed to try to try to reflect that in your games. Um, oftentimes in history, countries use natural uh, geographical borders to also help secure their country like a mountain ridge or something. Um, and that's something to consider when you're making your game. You know, is there a nation? How did it get here? Why is it here? Why is it safe? Um, what sort of things do they impose? Uh, what type of government is run? Um, and these things can influence other things within the game. Maybe you go into an area that has a really strict government, something happens to you. Um, this isn't necessary in every type of game. There's a lot of games that don't have governments, but if, you, uh, if you're trying to think of something a little more elaborate, it's something to think about. Uh, people is another important thing. So on a little smaller level, this is like the actual NPCs that you interact with. How are they gonna act? Uh, everything else that we've talked about kind of feeds into this. Um, whether it's the environment that they live in, like how are they gonna dress their clothes? Uh, or uh, the type of government that rules over them, like are they a serf or a king, or are they just a regular like farmer or something, um, or just like a guy that owns a like shop of some sort, I don't know. So um, those are things to consider about, as well as all the different things that go on in their life. Um, maybe there's some sort of religion that they are tied to, it doesn't have to be a real one, could be completely made up, um, something within the game. Uh, maybe they have different beliefs, different ways of life that uh, are different to the player, things that the player can learn about uh, and try to apply in uh, different decisions that they make throughout the game. So, Anybody have any comments? I'm just blabbing. I got nothing, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All right. So we also have culture. Uh, so culture can play a lot into uh, the, how the people work, um, just generally how people act as well as what they do and what sort of activities they partake in. Um, different things come out of that, like food, for an example. Uh, if you have a certain culture that makes certain types of food and then a different part of the world in a different country, they might have a completely different culture. You have different types of food. Um, all these things can go into creating a world. Uh, you also have the architecture. So how are the buildings designed? Um, if it's a rather poor civilization, do they have like houses made out of mud and brick? Uh, or if it's a more lavish civilization, maybe they have things made out of stone or even steel if they're advanced. Um, or if it's futuristic, maybe everything's made out of like force fields or something. Um, all things to consider, uh, as well as different so forms of art, music, theater. Uh, a lot of the stuff you probably won't add into a game all by yourself because this is a lot. But uh, if you're working on a game with a group of people or even uh, AAA, this is all things that they think about in all each one of these games. So, in holidays, I didn't even think about that one. <laughs> yeah, so retro. Mario Christmas. <laughs> Mario has his own holiday. I mean, he does want to. Oh, okay. Mario's birthday. Um, March 10th. You know. Is that real? Yeah, Mario Day. I didn't know that. Oh, because it's Mar 1-0. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay, but continuing, we have different legends. So these are... I actually remember that Fortnite bunker. Holy crap. Season 4? 3? It is real. It is real. How do you know? How do you, why do you think it's not real? The moon landing isn't real. No, no, he's saying the Fortnite bunker. I didn't say that that wasn't real. I said that he's not real. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, another thing to consider is legends. So these are things that are a little different from like history. History is something in the in the world that is there, it, like uh, seeing in a, an abandoned town or a dilapidated structure. Um, that can show history or a book of some sort or just a story that somebody tells you. But this is a little different. These are things that well, could also be a story somebody tells you, um, but it's just things that you hear about or you see something about and you know that it used to be in the game at some point, or not used to be in the game, but like used to be in the world at some point, um, and maybe it's not anymore. So it's just something that's heard in passing. Um, 
yeah, like the Fortnite bunker. I put Hero Brian in there because of the uh, updates where they said they removed him for however long they did that. Are they? Yeah, I think they stopped. They should add him. They should add him. Yeah, they should. That's true. But anyways, there's there's different things that impact the world. Maybe the maybe NPCs are scared of something because of a legend that they heard, stuff like that. So. So does legend does legend count as like something that like if the community makes up and that's not actually If they believe it, yeah. Oh wait, you mean community like the game community? Yeah, like the like the people that are fans of the game. I'm thinking about like remember that thing that people said about Luigi's Mansion, where it's like if you talk on the if you talk on the phone on the third floor, then like there's a glitch with the shadow, where like his shadow is lifted off the ground, so he's not. I remember that. Yeah, that's more of like a real world legend. Yeah, that's more of a real world legend. I'm thinking of. I mean, Hero Brian is more of a community thing, but the fact that the game acknowledged it and put it in yeah. the patch notes is the only reason why I put it on here. But the other things, like the Fortnite bunker, like that was in the game, so people did have theories and about a game. About it, so. um, <laughs> okay, so I got one more slide, and then we will do a fun activity. Uh, last thing is strangeness. <laughs> so these are these are things that yeah, like it says things that exist outside the real world. So anything that is um, not of this world, whether it's like spiritual, magic, um, monsters, or whatever souls, as it says. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and this this kind of ties a little bit into. Uh, religion and it can uh, sometimes it is completely abstracted away from it. It's not has to do anything with doesn't have anything to do with religion at all. Um, but you can have things in the game such as magic, which is very common, um, and that can be part of the world uh, as well as part of the character. It can influence uh, the NPCs. You know, you've all played games with magic before, I, I would imagine. So I mean, I'm a Mario fan. What do you expect? Yeah, exactly. So. Cool. Any... Magic didn't exist, but I'd just be, it'd be kind of depressing just like going down the pipe to the <laughs> uh, Any comments, questions about any of these? I would also add that, like, just like any like advanced technology that like doesn't like currently exist could be considered magic because if like it's not rooted in like entirely rooted in like real things, then like True. effectively magic then it's True. Yeah, if you have something that's so futuristic and high tech, like yes, it makes sense because it's science that so that's in their world. Um, to current day people, like, might not be a thing. <laughs> yeah, something like something like that, or like lightsabers. Like lightsabers, we've seen them so much in pop culture, but like, is it re like? It's kind of strange. I, I would all, yeah, almost argue that it's more magic because it's like, how do you stop light? Like, we don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, they explain it with the crystal or whatever, but we don't still don't know how to do that in real life. <laughs> it can cut through anything but other lasers. Yeah. We created this ultimate weapon that can destroy anything except itself. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, cannot self terminate. Hey, I know something I can't destroy. Another thing, a gun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's the boots, dude. Oh, it's the secret technology. All right. Well, let's move on. Now we are going to have a fun, fun, fun activity. Woo. Everybody cheer. Yay. Yay. All right. So we will be doing a world building activity. Uh, I put get into small groups because I don't know if we have enough items for everybody. Um, we might. Actually. I think we'll have one. Yeah, I'd say everybody get like pairs. It was probably good enough. Uh, and then we'll do that. So basically, you'll get into a pair. You will come up to the table and select an item. First come, first serve. 
Uh, if you brought an item, try to choose one that's not yours to influence creativity. Um, and then we'll have you generate a world based on that item. I'll list up all the different categories before. So if you want to, just go through and uh, try to think of different things that could possibly apply to that item. How does this item influence the world? Um, is there a religion based around the item? Uh, is, the, is it like part of the, the ground? Is it a mountain or something? Um, you know, how, how would it influence all these different things? Uh, so yeah, I'll let you guys get in pairs. All right, if I could attend, take your attention back up here. Um, so yeah, does anybody want to like give a brief overview of their, of their item and what they came up with? So we took this uh, whatever tablet pen, and our idea was this is a colonization missile. So basically you launch it at a planet, and it <laughs> sinks this deep into the ground. And in this section or so, there's fuel. It's everything it needs to get to where it goes, a launch system maybe. It fires, launch, lands on the planet like this. This part comes off. <laughs> All of this unused space that was not used for fuel or anything, storage, is a living space, sort of like a fallout vault. And there's a robot in the upper capsule that pops out, which will then take care of these three we call spikes. Spike one is called Adam, and it contains half of all human genome DNA. The second one is Eve, and it contains the other half. The third is the apple, which contains all human knowledge that they thought would be relevant to the colonization effort. And uh, the humans will basically be raised in the vault by the robot until um, they're able to support themselves and start colonizing the planet. Wow. That is very endogenous. Great idea. Anybody else? Yes, Jeff. All right. So we have a substance pill. Um, this provides one full day's worth of calories per human. And this is created only on a singular abandoned space station uh, that's uh, left with some uh, finicky large learning models um, <laughs> that, you know, the, the corporate owners of the space station, they talk about the wonders of like decentralization and all that. And then they like scrammed uh, after they found out they couldn't follow up on their business plans. So the remaining AI that uh, don't go haywire uh, help generate this randomly over like you know how like an AI like learns to like read an image over like millions of like iterations. Mm -hmm. It learns to create something that like can feed the humans that are still left in the space station by communicating with like mining droids and like uh, actual like creation and like assembly. AI on the space station, and they like synthesize this, and it provides the only rations left for the humans. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like space. Do you want to go next? Yeah. I had the golden stress ball brain with the ad for your life bio on it, which is kind of the part I ran with. So it's like a, a high tech dystopia where brains are like a commodity that's sold. So <laughs> oh, like the, the, the rich corporation owners, and then you have like intelligent people go to school and have their brain harvested on graduation. Oh, oh boy. Machines about what they learned about. <laughs> wow. I dropped out. I was the host. <laughs> nice. Anybody else? Uh, all right. So we came up with the idea, me and Jade, uh, we came up with the idea of like a planet post apocalyptic Earth where the w world is split into two factions. There is the plant, there's the plant people. Uh, similar to this guy, they're a bit more humanoid, and they live in nature, they embrace nature. Technology is also bound to nature. Um, and then you have the mechanical side, uh, which are like robot people and like different types of, and it's all mechanical. 
Greenland in the smack dab of the middle of the world is like a kind of perfect union of plants and machinery, which I kind of like to paradise. And so, you know, what we can do is like, you know, and there's different types of plant people. There's uh, plants like these, this guy, uh, mushrooms, uh, bushes, trees. You think it, you name it, there, there's a person, there's probably a plant person about it. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Anybody else want to go talk about their cool idea or not cool idea? Well, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. So I want to get up for it because I'm kind of tired. Uh, so I showed that mug that's over there. Uh, so it's the uh, the mug of infinite coffee, also known as the uh, limitless latte. And basically, um, someone drank from it one day, and uh, somehow there was like still coffee in it despite having like finished the mug. And so um, they started like continuously drinking it because like free coffee. Is really <laughs> Um, and then the guy got addicted and then started telling about it to all of his friends, right? And all of his friends started drinking it. And then uh, more people started getting addicted to this limitless latte. And eventually it started forming this like cult, right? And uh, like it's then, uh, it, people, it grew enough into power where they were able to go like, seize several US states <laughs> and um, <laughs> form their own society. Um, and they have a capital city known as Macchiato. Um, <laughs> and uh, people have started drinking this coffee so much that they started to get like superpowers from it, such as like, being able to fly, super fast, also uh, indigestion, headaches, like, uh, and stuff like that. Um, and they also are able to detect if someone has like, consumed a non-caffeinated beverage. And, uh, That's just canonically on the mug. Yeah, I'll be there's a whole daddy. Daddy. Daddy Macchiato. Daddy Macchiato. Cool. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Okay. Oh, now you want to go? Yeah, you can go. Yeah. Right. So, uh, imagine if you will. <laughs> if you will. Uh, there's an entire planet that's just a flat, like just a circle. That's it. Like it's a perfect sphere of dirt, and there are like holes that dot it, but there's nobody on the surface. Barren. The only thing that hits the surface is the piercing, burning rays of the nearby sun, destroying all life that would be. Civilizations of subterranean mole men, <laughs> possibly mole men and other creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Until one day, a being braves the surface wearing these magical sunglasses. It is God. <laughs> and he round house kicks the ground so hard, he pulls up the very dust. And mountains form, <laughs> filling the sky, blackening it so that people may once again live on the surface. <laughs> and then just leave and just leave. <laughs> 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 they don't, they don't, they don't do anything. Just throws them and walks away. <laughs> Basically, they don't do anything. They're just sunglasses. <laughs> Except for the chosen ones. <laughs> And then they just get stuck on your face and you have to kill God. Oh, Yeah, that took quite a <laughs> left turn. What can you do? He made these. He made these. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's a, it's a creation that's based around something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he told me that one person is the reason that the mountains exist and the reason that there's the water is because when he punched up the mountains, he kind of, you know, flattened half of them on the ground. So all the water that was down there got punched up. And now there's oceans and land and stuff. Yeah. And seas. And the reason the sky is dark gray is because of the dust from yeah. however many. There's mushroom trees and other stuff. <laughs> Yo, you're correct, but I yes. still fault you for trying. Yeah. This is terrifying. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. 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 Nice. I mean, a little pillar on another rack of gold. Yeah. Anybody else before I wrap up? No countdown this time. I'm just going. Yeah, it actually. No. <laughs> All right. So, uh, once again couple announcements again next week we'll be doing UI and Unity so uh, if you'd like to attend and learn how to do UI stuff in Unity please bring a laptop with Unity installed uh, preferably 2022 or newer just so uh, in case there's some things some things they changed because that's what I'll be using um, again t-shirt vote please go vote for that if you haven't already uh, and then if you'd like a hat or if you still want a t-shirt last minute Come talk to Jimmy or I after the meeting. Um, yeah, go forth, make games, and be awesome.